Hello everyone, it's time to do a boat review. So, as you know, Rob has been with us for many years now. Uh, his guiding service is pretty infamous across these parts. And when this boat initially came in, there were some changes that were done to the boat, actually quite a few for this model. There hasn't been that many changes in a number of years. But instead of going off of what we see on first impressions, we thought it was important that Rob spend some time in the boat, on the water, taking a look at what these changes are, how they affect his life, what are some of the pros and cons. Um, no word of a lie, it's still a beautiful boat. Oh, right? and initial impressions? Literally, I'm not a boat designer because I was like, why did they do this? Why did they do this? Why did they do But now, after using the boat for 10 weeks, I should stick to fishing and not designing boats because I was wrong on 99.9% .9 of the changes that I didn't like. Now I love them. So, yeah, yeah I'll stick to fishing, not designing boats. Sometimes boat. change is good. <laughs> Anyways, let's hop in the boat. So Rob, tell us which model that you ended up getting this year. So this is a 1975 Pro V. Uh, this is my third Pro V in a row, but with the new design this year, uh, the 2023 model. It's just some changes that we covered on the show and see maybe why they made the changes and why I've come to talk about the last two years. So one of the things we first noticed when the boat first came in, it seemed like we were Missing some space here yeah. on the front. Yeah, we lost a bit of deck space on the front. Fishability wise, yes. I've noticed no difference. I thought I would. This one, this is still I think I'm going to guess eight inches is what we lost on the back, somewhere around there. Um, but you've got that at the back. Right. The, the bonus. So in this area, it seems like you have more room Correct. for additional people than in the previous model. Yeah, with the, the flip up seats is I think why they had to move it forward to accommodate the, the bigger back neck to eat up a little bit of the front. Fishability wise, it hasn't changed. I, I've had three people check it out the model once, it hasn't changed. So let's talk about some of the things that have changed that people will notice coming into this boat. Now, previously, if you went into the rock locker. You used to be able to access your batteries from just underneath that pan. That's right. Yeah. So, how did they, what's changed on that now? So, now the batteries are accessible to the floor here. Right. So, moves it further back, the weight further back in the hole, which we were concerned about how the whole shot would change with the weight from the back. Now looking at where the batteries actually are, it's not much different than they were in the old model, right? Because everything's moved a bit forward, and they're dying to follow very close to the same area. It hasn't changed whole shot or anything like that. The weight disbursement of the batteries hasn't really changed anything. Accessibility is just through the floor instead of underneath the bottom. Okay. So some of the other things that we noticed that changed, it seemed like your storage compartments at the front, the two at the front of the deck, seemed to be somewhat the same as they were. They shrunk a hair, but not a lot. Okay. Not a lot. Everything, because when I pack my boat, basically this is for tackle. That is all my safety equipment. Like if I was to get pulled over, everything is in one compartment. I'm looking for things all over the boat. It's all in one area. And what they did change here, by when they did move the deck back, this is now a cooler. This so you have a log well here. There's a log well there. This is, now, there. this is now a cooler. It used to be storage. And when I saw cooler, I was like, I don't, I would never use a cooler. Right. Well, now that I have a cooler, I'm using a cooler every day. I pick up a bag of ice, it's 41 degrees out today. There's nothing better than ice cold water on a hot day. You know, a cooler is great. You know, like a soft side cooler, but nothing better than water on ice. And I've been doing that for my clients all summer, and it's been great. So the cooler, initially I thought, that's kind of, you know, that's not for me. But in the end, it is for me, and I've used it every day. So it's been, it's been a nice addition. So 
one of the things that I've noticed is pretty much every vote that you've gotten from us, you have an Altera on the front. So why always the Altera? My biggest thing, especially when it means flies, is I want them to show up and me already have a vote for them. Sitting and waiting for them to arrive. So I'm always 15, 20 minutes before they get there. But self launching with the Altera is. To me, you're not dealing with the rope, you're not dealing with any of that, you can just send the boat off the trailer, deploy the Altera, spot lock it, go park your truck, come back and get it. Throw your bumpers on, tie up to the dock, or most of the time, I will just float off the dock until the flies arrive on the dock, and then go in and pick them up. Being able to self-launch, self-deploy the trolling motor, spot lock it, you know, just like the commercial. Right. I do that every time I fish. It's, it's so, for me, it's, what I need, truth. So, as, as everyone knows, the Altera is a little more expensive. So, obviously for NRJ's work as a guide, it's very helpful to him, as he's always the one launching it. But certainly, if you fish a lot by yourself, right, this is a perfect option to entertain. And if you wanna know price differences, uh, and now, you know, Minn Kota has come out with a whole new revamped line, the Quest line. Give us a call and we can go over that. So, one of the other changes that I thought was pretty cool was this right here. So, this compartment is new, uh, where you have access to a lot of the wiring and setup when you're putting your graphs, your trolling motor, and all this stuff. So, it kind of gives you a much easier access, everything's all in one area, and it's all very workable. See, that's an area that RJ is not allowed to go into. <laughs> I don't touch any of that stuff. I don't, yeah, I don't. he brings it back here. Yeah. <laughs> and then Something's wrong here. I don't know. I don't but know. if you're so inclined, <laughs> here's where you do it. It's right there. <laughs> the other thing that changed was we used to have a small little door here for storage. Right. Which frankly was a bit of a pain. And now they turned around into here. So I think it's basically the same space, but now it's accessible from here. So instead of just a small little access door, I mean, I've been losing stuff in here. I know what's in here, but I just can't find it. It probably makes better sense there because simply if you're mostly in that position That's right. where you're at now yep. and to access that. Yeah. You know, whoever's fishing on the front here, sometimes you got to move them out of the way That's right. to get at it. So I could definitely see the advantages of that. And that just ties into the whole new dash. So the whole new dash that we came out with. Completely redesigned dash. Much better glove box door. Everything is just a sexier one. So as we mentioned in the beginning of the video, um, yes, you lose a little bit of space at the front of the boat, but talk about, you know, when you have people in the boat, do you get the sense that this is roomier now when you have multiple people in the boat? So typically if I have two or three people in the boat and 99% of the time I don't fish while I'm coming. So I'll be on the back corner controlling the Altera from there. Two guys are in the front. One person's going to be standing beside me. If they hook a fish up there, it's a long way for me to get up to the front. So there's lots of room through here. If someone's not comfortable standing up here, like the other day I had a 97-year-old man in my boat. Like, it was incredible. But he sat in his chair all day, and he was fine. Right? But there's always somewhere in the boat for whoever your guest is, whether it's a kid. You know, I had some kids the other day. Well, they didn't stand out here. Mom and Dad weren't comfortable with them standing up here. So they just stood not and there's lots of room. You can take the seat out. This one's completely removed, right? So there's always right. lots of room on the dance floor is what I call it. So if I'm trolling, that extra space is amazing for yeah. the troll. Right? Like your, your dab rigging or whatever else you want to do, bus control or whatever, having this extra space back here is a big advantage. Now, one of the other changes that they did, and when I saw the spec sheet that came to us when this boat was coming out, I was like, why didn't you change that? And I know you had a, a certain perspective in the beginning, but that's somewhat changed, where now you have two flip-up seats in the back. In the old version, you had complete deck, 
right, for people standing off the back. And let's be honest, in this style of boat, that, that was a, a very popular feature that they wanted. But now that you've had time with this feature, what are your thoughts on it? So two things, they're great to have, because if I'm only taking out two or three guys, I can remove the seat completely and put it in the barn and they can yeah, yeah, more floor space. Around. You got more floor space. Secondly, especially with guard trips, for me, while we're sight fishing, this is higher than the old deck. Oh, it is. It's got to be four or five inches higher. Uh, so people not, that are fishing up there can see fish, but they can also feel fish from back here because this is actually much higher than the old deck. Right. So, and you, there is a step up to get up to, whereas before it was like maybe this, now it's about a good foot up. So it's almost, almost gunnel height is where this back is. Um, when we talk about the storage that we lost in the front, Yes. It's all back here. So all my planos are back here now. So your battery for your cranking is still accessed through here. Yeah. But now you have storage on the opposite side. So the live well itself, exactly the same it's a capacity. Little, it's the same capacity, but it's a little shorter, but deeper. Okay. Uh, for bass guys, if you're going to put bass in here, I definitely put the divider in there. Because they get a little trickier to catch because there's a lot of water. <laughs> it's a big life. So this, this kind of stuff, I was always kind of stuck. This stuff was hokey. Yeah. Now that I have it and it's there, I always know where my pliers are. I had to get in the habit of putting them back, but I would always be looking for my pliers. Constantly. Looking. Okay. Now, I know where they are. So another big change from the previous models are the gunnels on either side. So I know originally your storage compartments that were on either side, uh, that one's obviously larger than this one. Um, you lose a little bit of space, eh? Not in that one. Not that in one this one. This one's good? Okay. But on your other side? On this other lose... side, so what they've done is they've actually made this a rod lock. So if I wanted to put, someone wanted to put rods in here, the confusing part to me is I would never put rods on it. So what it's done is it, it's, I used to be able to shove five full light jackets up the, this gunnel. Now I can only get three because they've actually made it. Work. So of everything they did, that's the only frustration for myself, the change with this book. But if you're a guy like me, you it have 26 matter. rods. It doesn't, <laughs> yeah, well, not only that, but if it, it you don't need to carry five full-size light jackets. Yeah. I do, yeah. as a guy, right? I have to have them on board. Plus, just, we use the inflatables, but we also have to have those on board. Okay. The whole time. One other thing I noticed, this is new. Yep, very nice. Training people to step on them is the problem. <laughs> yeah. But, but they just, on the, here don't, you don't, can be a little yeah, bit greasy if it's raining. Yes, 100%. But here, you have traction. Yeah. Yep. Very nice touch. So just, that's the thought process behind I, that yes, picture. And I just say, please step on this, and then they step over here. <laughs> how it works. Yeah. Okay. We're going to move to the back of the motor. Okay, we're going to talk about what powers this beast. What's your main motor, RJ? 225 Pro XS. I throw this sexy little cover on it. You don't get water spots on it. So when you get this boat, it won't have any water spots. Nice. Uh, fully loaded, how fast are you getting? I think I've had it full pin once. 56? 56? 56, 57 maybe? But okay. I, I don't feel it. Like, yeah. whoever buys this boat, it's gently used. But like, right. Gas is a buck seven or eight. Yeah. <laughs> so, as an add-on to this package, we did put a kicker motor on it. Yep. So talk about uh, the kicker motor we have here. So if you're going to do any trolling at all, you're not going to want to run the main motor. So um, we've done some lake trip trips on Lake Ontario, and even if you're in, inland and you're going to do some trolling, what I do with, in conjunction with the kicker motor and the Altera is you power the boat with the kicker and you steer with the Altera. So with the Altera, you can put it, it has an iPilot fight feature that you can just point it in a direction and that you don't touch anything. You don't steer the boat. Just keep 
changing your line on the remote. You can see it right on the Hummingbird. If I stay on this line, we're just going to keep going right down this line, and you're powered through the picker. So it's kind of a, for me, it's great when you're guiding because I don't have, no one has to steer the boat. You're hooking a fish, you're on hooking a fish, you're netting fish, whatever. No one steers the boat the whole time. Just, I can change the direction we want to go just by moving a couple degrees over on the Hummingbird because you can see the, the exact track you're going to go on. And adjusting your speed on your kicker, you feel you can get pretty dialed in. You can get pretty dialed in. It's got the, the pro control at the, right at the helm. So, you know, you are constantly speeding up and slowing down, depending on wind. Sometimes you're going to speed up, sometimes you're going to slow down. Right? Just keep the right speed on your, on your downriggers. But it's all controlled from the helm. You're not back here playing with the motor back here. It's all controlled from the helm. And I've been down to a mile an hour. You know, I'm sure if musky guys, you can probably get it. Awesome. Well, all we have left to do is talk about this magnificent trailer that it's sitting on. So folks, we can't have a boat this size, this kind of weight, this kind of horsepower without a trailer to be able to accommodate, right? So dual axle, custom trailer, load guides, step, Bear tie, sexy Lun logo, swing tongue. This is the way you need to do it. For more information on this boat, give us a call.